Hey homegirls, welcome to my channel, Happily Thriving Heidi. Today is a very fun collab day that I'm doing with my friend Kristen Kay, who is also a DIYer and thrifty shopper just like me. Together we're teaming up to bring you all some fun fall DIYs that are easy to follow along to and to do it on a budget. If you don't know who Kristen is, there's no worry, I will link her down below in the description box, but Kristen's content and her channel on mine are so similar. She does clean with me's and a whole lot of trash to treasures, some thrifting shopping, and a ton of gorgeous DIYs. I wanted to remind you all, or if you haven't heard, that starting on November 4th, going all the way to December 13th, I am going to be celebrating Christmas with a ton of new ornament ideas and home decor for your Christmas season. To get started for DIY number one, you are gonna take four long painter sticks and you are gonna cut off the handle part on the stick. So I'm gonna just line it up here on my little cutting tray and with my hacksaw, I'm going to cut a straight line on all four of these painter sticks. Once I've got them all laid out, you can see that they're all the same length and I'm gonna just take a light brown color and I'm going to paint all of the sticks this color. Now, let me say, you guys, I am not a fan of these foam brushes, but at the time I could not find my regular paint brushes. I don't know why crafters use these things. I think that they are just a piece of junk. I'm so sorry, they're not, they're not my favorite craft supply, but if it's what I had on hand, so I went ahead and used it. I feel like every time I ever use these, I just throw them away when I'm done. Leave a comment down below if you feel the same way about these, because I just, I don't know, I would rather use a nice paintbrush and just wash it when I'm done. Once I got all of those painted brown, I was kind of adding in some white here and there on these painter sticks to give it a little bit of that distressed wood look to it because I wanted it to look weathered, especially because it's the fall season and I just think it looks so much cuter with the farmhouse fall decor when it looks a little bit weathered. Once they were all dried, I took my sticks and I laid them on a piece of foam cord board. I love using foam cord board for farmhouse frames and signs because you can do some really cool things and today I'm going to show you how I'm using this foam cord. So I went ahead and laid down my painter sticks and then I cut where I wanted it to fit perfectly underneath those painter sticks so you see that I have a frame here and already this is super cheap way cheaper than buying these frames yourself from the store it is just so cost effective doing it this way so then once I had my piece of foam cord cut out I took a piece of drop cloth that I had and I just laid it right on top now drop cloth when you cut it it can shrink some which is okay because you want to make sure you have some of that foam cord exposed so that the painter sticks not only stick to the fabric but also stick to the foam cord so it really adheres well to the board. So you can see here with my hot glue I'm going back and forth on it so that way it gets nice coverage with the hot glue. And now instead of having the corners be mitered I'm sandwiching them and you can see here that there's the sticks sandwiched with the top and the bottom. Now I'm going to move on to the next part and I'm going to take these little pumpkins that I got from the Dollar Tree. There were I think five in the pack for a dollar and they're just so cute. I thought this would be so adorable on this frame. So I'm going to take some wood putty and I'm just going to fill in those little holes because I'm not going to be stringing them up. They're meant to be for a banner. But I really love the idea more of being able to just use these on this farmhouse sign. So the colors of paint I'm going to be using are yellow, orange, and then again that brown color, but I'm going to use that brown color to help darken the orange color so that I have all different shades of orange here on these little pumpkins. Have fun with your colors. Don't worry about making it all the exact same color, which is kind of what I'm doing here because pumpkins are not always the same color. Then once they're all dry, I took a whole bunch of little leaves from Dollar Tree Florals 
and stems and I just cut them all up to fit the size that I needed for the pumpkins glued some on and then glued on little twine bows and this twine is also in the craft section at the Dollar Tree which is really great now I didn't do this to every single pumpkin some pumpkins had this and then some had little raffia ribbons and I just loved how it looked when I altered them going back and forth once I got all my pumpkins glued down, I moved on to the sign. I found these metal words. I love these, you guys. I hope they come out with some of these for Christmas time. I think Dollar Tree knocked it out of the park when they came out with these. So I went ahead and picked out the one that I wanted, which was Harvest. And I put some hot glue on it and just glued it right at the bottom underneath all of my pumpkins. I just think this is so cute. Then I took this heavier twine and I cut a nice piece off so I could hot glue it and then it reinforce it with some duct tape at the back to make sure it really stays on well. And again, all of these supplies came from the Dollar Tree except for the drop cloth, but that was super cheap. If you are all enjoying these DIYs, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It really helps out my channel and it means the world to me. The next project we're going to be doing is a boo sign and the tools you're going to need are something to be able to push pressure down onto the foam cord board. So I'm going to be using this little metal tool that I actually use for doing flowers on nails whenever my daughter wants flowers on her little toes. But you can use anything like the back of a paintbrush or a pencil, just something that has a nice tip that will allow you to press in without it puncturing all the way through the paper. So here's what it looks like when you pull back the paper. You can see that it fully indented it without it having any issues. And then now you know where you need to cut and it's gonna just make it so quick to be able to cut out the letters that you want. I mean, can you just imagine how many cool things you can do with these letters and being able to trace on foam cord board just like this. So I went ahead and I cut out my letters, the B and the two O's, and then once I was all done getting it cut out, I went through and cleaned it up a little bit. Now it doesn't have to be perfect because we are going to be doing something with it, which is painting. You can see that I found my paintbrush because I could not bear those foam brushes anymore. But I basically painted my letters where the white was showing and then went over the black again. The next step I'm going to move on to is the raffia. I like to take the raffia and get strands of it and then twist them just like I'm doing here in this video. And then I tie my bow. This makes it so that your bow looks really clean without it looking too crazy and ratty. <laughs> I'm not a fan of it when it looks like that. I feel like this is the way to get a nice clean bow whenever you're working with this particular texture. Now that the paint is dry, I took some Elmer's glue and I am going to just brush that all over my letters because I just love a little glitter for Halloween. I don't like glitter on everything, but I just felt like this sign could really use it and just make it look, I don't know, cuter with glitter on it. You don't have to do the glitter, you can skip that part if you don't like glitter. Then once the glitter was dry, I took some more of the raffia string and I tied the two O's together, added some more hot glue, and then added on the bow. And then I did the same thing with the B. Now moving on up at the top, I'm going to take some of this ribbon that I also got from the Dollar Tree. If you're not good at tying bows or you're working with a ribbon that has one pattern on one side and not on the other like this one does with the lace. I like to cut two strips just like this, smush them into the middle, take another strip and wrap it around the bow. And this allows you to be able to get a really pretty bow without struggling having to tie it. 
and then you just fold it underneath to give it a nice clean finish. And then you can just fluff your bow up really easy without any problems. And then you take another piece, snip off at an angle for the ends, and you've got yourself a cute bow. I'm now needing a piece of raffia to be able to connect the bow to the ribbon. So I just went a little loop around the B at the top, and then I'm gonna glue that all in place with the bow. Once I was finished with that bow, I created a little loop so that I would have a place to be able to hang it up. This next project is hands down my favorite one of this video, so I saved the best for last. I took a big stick that I found, or branch I guess, that I found after a storm and I've been holding on to it for some time because I knew I wanted to make this into something special for Halloween. So I wanted to clean up the top and the bottom of it to make sure that it could, you know, not poke anyone or splinter. So I went ahead and just cut that off at the top of the bottom to clean it up. And then I took this square that you can pick up at any craft store. And I just used a coupon to get it even cheaper. Drilled a hole into this square plaque and then also into the bottom of this branch. This is to help it from splintering or having any issues. Then once I had my holes drilled, I was ready to put them together and it's really easy. If you need an extra hand, you can always have someone hold the plaque for you. You can see here I'm struggling just a little bit because I'm doing it by myself, but it's not hard at all to do. So you just line up your screws and then screw it into place to make sure it's nice and sturdy. I actually didn't show it, but I added a little bit of hot glue in there too to make sure it really stuck together nicely. Then I'm going to take another piece of drop cloth, a nice long piece, and you can see here that I'm folding it in half, and I'm going to just take my glue, any guesses at this point what I'm making? I then am going to take it and start wrapping it around the base of this branch, and I'm just going to keep bundling it, bunching it, whatever you want to call it you know, pleating it so that it's covering the, the wood plaque at the base of this project that I'm making. And then I'm just going to keep going around and around and around until all the fabric has been bunched up onto this exact same spot. And then once it's all done and I've got it all in place, I make sure that everything is being able to be covered. I move on to strips. So I made a whole bunch of these strips from another project. If you saw my rag banner that I put over my front door, you will know that these are leftovers from that. And so I just took these strips and I'm going to just glue them on like this, real simple, all over. And there's no rhyme or reason to this. You just keep gluing them on until it looks nice and full. Now at this point, I'm gonna loosen up the fabric at the bottom that I wrapped around from earlier. So I make a snip and then I rip all the way up so that there's more you know, pieces that are all torn and ratty looking. The rattier it looks, the better. Okay, so I'm sure by now you guys have figured out that I'm making a witch's broom. I have wanted to make one of these forever. And these, I mean, so far, how much have I spent? Like nothing on this thing, cause it's a stick from the yard and a wood plaque that I got with a really great coupon and some drop cloth. I mean, you could use a sheet on this. You don't have to use drop cloth. You could just take an old sheet. So really at this point, I have only spent, you know, maybe a dollar or two on this thing. And then I'm gonna take this really thick twine rope and I'm gonna just keep wrapping it around the tighter you get it the better and then you're just going to keep hot gluing it into place to make sure that it's really nice and snug I'm going to take some foam cord board and I'm going to cut these long strips just like this and I believe that this was I think it was nine by three and a half and I glued two together 
and then I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and I'm going to just cut out a very jagged looking edge. This is going to look like pieces of wood when we're done with them. But I wanted to use a really fun color so I went with orange and then I came back in with my brown and I just distressed them with some brown paint. So now that it's all dry, I made three of these. You can go ahead and use these Dollar Tree stickers. I ended up using two of them, two of these Dollar Tree stickers. I love these stickers. I love the font of them. And I'm gonna go ahead and spell out Happy Halloween. I wanted to say Happy Halloween Witches, but when I ended up putting the word witches on, I didn't mean it to sound like the B word, you guys. We do not cuss at all in our home. And I thought it was just so cute because it was a witch's broom. So I was like, oh, happy Halloween, witches. And my 16-year-old son came downstairs. And when he saw the sign on it, he thought it said the B word. And for like two seconds, he, <laughs> he was taken back by it. He didn't... Uh, think that that was very appropriate so afterwards I felt bad and I ended up changing it to happy Halloween friends because that was more appropriate <laughs> to reinforce your little signs on the stick I went ahead and put glue on the actual branch stuck it to it and then flipped it over and used some more of that really thick rope twine string and I glued them all into place so see you can see here it says happy Halloween witches I'm going to go ahead and just put some more hot glue down here at the bottom of the sign because this is going to help reinforce it and keep it on there really well. Now I've had these out for a couple days and there has not been any issues with them being foam cord board. I love this DIY. That is it for today. I had so much fun partnering up with Kristen. Remember, don't forget to check out her channel. She's linked down below. If you have any questions about any of these DIYs, just leave it in a comment down below and I will get to you as soon as possible. And until the next video, bye homegirls.